Hello YouTube! This is my review of the 2019 Armagranit 3S BLX. This vehicle was initially released in 2018 and updated in 2019 with a new color scheme, spectrum transmitter, and IC5 connectors. Other than that, it's the same under the hood as the orange granite from 2018 as far as I know. This popular model is a 110 scale, four-wheel drive, brushless monster truck. It comes equipped with a 3200 kV 3660 brushless motor, a 100 amp ESC, and a 7 kg metal geared steering servo. The package includes the truck, radio, a bag of tools and additional C clips, a technical pack manual showing you how to do basic maintenance, a detailed instruction manual useful for first time users, and a sticker sheet. The buyer must provide a 2S or 3S LiPo battery and charger. I've read and heard lots of fussing about the Spectrum STX2 radio. As someone with no experience with the previous radio that came with the old Granite, I can honestly say that I can't really find much to fuss about with the Spectrum unit. It comes with all the usual trims and dual rates, as well as a handy 5075-100 switch that allows you to dial down power for inexperienced drivers. It doesn't have range issues, and I personally can't find much to dislike. On 2S, this truck handles very well. It remains composed even at high speeds. Its well-tuned suspension out of the box allows it to bounce along in the grass or on bumpy surfaces while remaining responsive, as long as the front wheels are on the ground. The included Metal Gear servo is very serviceable for bashing purposes. It's a bit slow for racing, but keeping in mind what this truck is and what it's designed for, it's hard to fault it much. The Granite's tires, the Deboot Fortress tires, seem to work quite well. They're better suited for grass and dirt, but they can work on pavement, as long as the driver refrains from making sharp turns at full speed. More on that later. On 2S, this truck is plenty fast for a good bashing session. Hitting ramps at speed will propel the truck 5 feet in the air. Going full throttle will rip apart a loose surface. It may not be a speed demon with these settings, but it definitely still feels like a brushless truck. Those with only 2S batteries should not be discouraged by the 3S in the Granite's name, as it's still loads of fun on 2S. The Granite seems built with the idea that every time it's taken out for a run, its components will be pushed to their limits, and it shows. The truck boasts a number of features that reflect Arma's mentality of don't just bash, blast. One of these is the plastic retainers for the body clips. Body clips fly off during intense bashing sessions, so Arma came up with a way to tether them to the truck's body. Just remember not to pull on the retainers themselves when removing the body clips. Another nice touch is the dirt guards that can be found along the truck. The truck's shocks each have one, and the chassis boasts tall plastic walls to help keep bashing byproducts at bay. They certainly don't keep everything out, but I've found that it stays cleaner than other vehicles I own and bash. In my experience, the two main reasons that basher vehicles find themselves in need of parts are as follows bashing too hard, and children. What better way to test the granite's durability than to hand over the radio to an eager seven-year-old? The truck had to brush off things like this, and this, and oh no, not that. It took it all like a champ and came back looking for more. Quite durable, I'd say.
It is noteworthy that my stock servo cooked after about a dozen runs. However, I can't really fault the servo for failing when it did, as I was launching the truck right into the incline of a ditch. Looking at online forums, I found lots of people who wanted to swap the servo, but not so many that needed to. I can therefore conclude that it isn't always an underwhelming component in these trucks. Considering its price, the Granite can be used in many exciting ways. Its brushless motor and large tires make it well suited for some leisurely lawn mowing. Large open fields avoided by smaller vehicles or brushed motors are transformed into ideal environments for speed runs. Just keep out of the wet stuff, as wet grass can cause some of the truck's components to stick, especially the power module. On pavement, the Granite is still a ton of fun. Operating on 2S, it's quite fast and maneuverable. Maybe a tad too fast, as a matter of fact, because it will topple over sideways if turned too sharply at speed. If you're going to be racing the Granite, you might want to consider swapping the tires. Clay doesn't seem to suit the Granite's stock tires very well. It's similar to driving it on pavement, but less predictable. Doing laps around an old clay track, I felt like I knew that the granite was going to slip, but I didn't ever know how much. Thanks to the Fortress tire's low traction on smooth surfaces and the irregularity of the track, it was a lot of guesswork. For a completely new driving experience, one must simply take the granite on loose dirt. The thrills quickly become apparent as the truck throws huge rooster tails and starts to slide in corners. This is great fun, but it is also great messy fun. Some gunk is going to be kept out by the dirt guards on the shocks and chassis, but a thorough cleaning after running in the dirt is recommended. Maintenance on the granite is surprisingly easy, but there is a learning curve. All important components are very easily accessed, but knowing what to do to get to them isn't always obvious. The power module is a great example. In order to extract it from the truck, first remove a screw right in the center of the chassis. Then, Pinch the spring-loaded center drive shaft just the correct way and take it out. I try to tuck the front end of the drive shaft to the bottom right, then I find that it's easier to unfasten the back end. Afterwards, pull down on the red piece holding one of the battery straps towards the back of the chassis. Finally, grab the pull tab on the top of the power module and pull it forward. On paper, Arma is correct in the advertised simplicity of working on this module. It only takes one screw, but it isn't exactly intuitive when you're used to traditional wrenching. While we're on the topic of the power module, it must be mentioned that Arma took the guesswork out of setting the gear mesh for the motor pinion gear and the spur gear on the slipper assembly. All around the engine mount are little numbers next to the mount screw holes. These represent the number of teeth on the pinion you wish to install. Simply place the screws in the correct holes when installing a new pinion and the gear mesh will be set perfectly. Music 
On 2S, this truck makes for a great entry-level basher. Its handling and performance don't disappoint. It'll take a beating without a whimper, and it's a lot of fun just about anywhere. Though some aspects of its maintenance are unconventional at first, its components are ultimately easier to access, making it a pleasant vehicle to work on once you've put in a bit of practice. This truck is a masterclass of a bashing vehicle for a good price, and clearly demonstrates what Arma means when it claims that it has crossed over into the realm of blasting rather than plain bashing. If you're looking for a 1 to 10 scale basher, you'd have a hard time finding something better than this.